Today we're going to talk about how to write something inside the browser using JavaScript. And when it comes to writing stuff inside the browser, you know, to generate some kind of output, there's a couple of different ways we can do it. Not just writing inside the actual website, but also writing other different places inside the browser we might not have seen before. So the first methods we're going to use is something called alert. Now, when we alert something inside the browser, it means that we are writing some kind of text that will pop up in a small alert box that you're going to see inside the browser. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys so you can see what I'm talking about here. So let's actually go ahead and start out by, as you guys can see, I have a very basic HTML5 layout here. I'm going to go ahead and create my script tags so we can actually start writing something. Now in between my script tags, I'm going to go ahead and write alert parentheses, semicolon. And inside the parentheses, we're going to write a string, which is when you put uh, quotation marks and write some kind of text inside of here. When you use quotation marks, it's going to see the, you know, the text as actual text. And we're going to talk about that in a few episodes from now, you know, like the different data types. But for now, quotation marks means a string, which is text. So I'm going to go ahead and say, hi there, exclamation mark which means that right now, if I go back into the browser, refresh it, it's gonna run the alert code. And as you guys can see, I get a small message that says, hi there, and I can click okay. So that is what happens when you alert stuff. Let's actually talk about writing stuff inside the actual browser. So if I were to delete this code again, and instead write document dot write parentheses, semicolon, and again, we're going to write a string inside the parentheses. I'm going to say, hi, there. Let's actually go ahead and there we go. And if I refresh the browser, you guys will notice we get, hi, there, inside the actual website. So using document write, what we're basically doing here is we're saying, okay, we have a document, and we're going to use a method called write, uh, which just basically writes something inside our document, which is our file here. So that's another method we can use in order to actually write something inside the browser, you know, some kind of output. Now, if I were to do something a little bit different, where let's say I have a div box inside my website, and this div box has maybe an ID or something. And this, by the way, is basic HTML, so you should know this by now. And let's say this div box has an ID as test, just for the sake of this exercise. What we can do then is we can actually go ahead and start over here and we're going to go ahead and say we have a document, which again is this page here. And inside this document, we want to get some kind of element, you know, an HTML element that has a specific ID. So we're pointing towards something they want to do something to. So I'm going to say get element by ID. Notice that I did use a big E, a big B and a big I because it is case sensitive. So if you don't do it correctly, it will not know what you're trying to do with this piece of code here. And now I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay, I have some kind of element inside the website, an HTML element, and it has an ID as test. So now we're pointing towards this thing up here. And notice that we do have a starting tag and a closing tag of this element. Now afterwards, I'm gonna say dot, then I'm gonna write inner HTML with big HTML. And then I'm going to go ahead and set it equal to something. Now it doesn't have to be a string. It could possibly be a number or something. And again, we're going to talk about the different data types in a later point, but for now, we're just going to go ahead and keep, you know, using strings. So I'm going to say, hi there. Now everything does move down on a new line because it's not, you know, it, there's no more space on the right side. So I'm just going to zoom out a bit here. Now what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and say, okay, we have an element that has an ID as test, which is this up here. And I'm going to go in between the open and closing tags because we're going inside, you know, in the inner HTML. And then we're going to go ahead and, you know, output something, which in this case is a text called hi there. So if I go back again, refresh, you guys can see there's no change because the ID is still up here. And now it's writing out hi there again. You know, and I did actually delete our document write example. So that's not the thing going again just pointing that out. Um, and that's another way we can actually do this. And this one is slightly more complicated than simply writing document, right? But there's a lot of cases where you would want to do something like this. 
which we'll get to you know in a later episode. Now the last example I want to show you guys is when we actually lock something inside the console of the browser. Now you might not know what the console is if you haven't actually done anything you know besides HTML and CSS. But if I were to write console dot log parentheses, and again now we're not pointing towards our document. Now we're actually pointing pointing towards the console of the website, you know, of the browser, which I'll show you guys where it is afterwards. And now we're using a method called log. I'm going to go ahead and write a string in here. I'm just going to go ahead and write hi there. And now I'm going to go ahead and go in and refresh my website again. And as you guys can see, we get nothing inside the actual website. But if I were to right click, inspect elements or just inspect, you guys can see we get this little window here. I can actually go ahead and just do like so inside our actual website that shows different types of information. We can actually see the HTML elements of our website here. We can see the body tags and we can actually see the JavaScript code we wrote in here. If I were to go up to the console part at the top here, you guys can see it says hi there. And you might be asking, what do we need to use the console for? Well, for JavaScript, it's really good for doing, you know, testing and see if stuff is actually working like it should inside the website. So at a later point, we'll be using the console for stuff. Let's say, for example, I had to do something with, you know, uploading images or something. We can use this console in here to see what's actually going on. So that's basically it for the console for now. We'll, we'll get more into it later on. So that's the four different methods we can actually write stuff inside the browser. And we did actually use different things down here, you know, with punctuations, and we haven't actually talked about what this stuff does. You know, why do we write something with parentheses on some of these things? We'll get to that in a future episode. Uh, for now, there's a couple of basic things that you need to know first before we can actually dive into, for example, objects and properties and methods. And um, so we're just going to go ahead and cover a few of the basics first, and then we're going to start getting into objects, which you will be using all the time when it comes to JavaScript. And again, just like with the PHP tutorial series, I should probably, you know, mention that a lot of the stuff you learn inside JavaScript is stuff that in the beginning doesn't really make sense. You might not see what you need to use it for. But in a later episode, I will come up with some exercises to show you guys examples of how we could use the JavaScript to actually do something inside our website. Because I know how frustrating it can be or how boring it can be to learn something and not know why you're learning it. It's really important that you guys understand exactly what the purpose is of the stuff you learn inside these tutorials. So I think in a couple of episodes from now, we will actually start talking about an example because JavaScript is fairly quick when it comes to actually doing examples. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I'll see you guys next time.